Let's thank you, Lord. Just trying to follow the leading of the Holy Spirit. You know these songs are old, like we are. Yeah. So <laughs> sing along with us. While the world looks upon me and I struggle. my sister Donna but I got COVID somehow or another I have no idea but I was very ill so I thank God but I'm still suffering I have long COVID but you know I say and you've heard me say this I will sing until I can't sing so today if you hear popping and cracking and scratching it's because of the throat but I love him so much and you know he helped me through it I was down for 14 days and it was bad, let me tell you. It wasn't like any other thing I've ever faced. But thank God for that. So I'll hush, Brenda. (laughs) I weren't going to say anything, but I did. (laughs) I'm standing on the rock. Through life's disappointments, strives and discontentment, I cast my every care upon the Lord. No matter what obsession, pain or deep depression, I'm standing on the solid rock. I'm standing on the rock 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 of ages. 
safe from every storm. From all the storm all the storm that rages, rich in love I'm free. But not from Satan's wages, I'm standing on the solid rock. Now I'm pressing onward, each step leads me homeward. My Satan's wages, I'm standing on the solid rock. I'm standing on the rock, on the rock, on the rock of ages. Safe from every storm, from all the storm, all the storm that rages. Rich in love, I'm free, but not from Satan's wages. I'm standing on the solid rock. Standing on the solid rock. Okay. <clears throat> this one's for Crystal, and I hope she enjoys it because I can't sing it. On that resurrection morning, when the redeemed are gathering in, I'll be in that royal number when they call my name. When they gather round and sing hallelujah to the king, I'll cry with a joyful sound, Lord, here I am. Lord, here I am. Here I am. Here I am. Left the fold and found there were ninety and nine, but he left the fold to find one little lost lamb, and here I am. Now, when old Gabriel sounds his trumpet and we rise up in the air in less time than a split second, I'm gonna be changed from here to there. Where there will be no grief nor pain, perfect yeah. peace and joy shall reign. Home at last I shall proclaim, Lord, here I am. Here I am. Here I am. Lord, here I am. Here I am. I'm the one the shepherd left the fold and found. There were ninety and nine. But he left the bull to find one little lost lamb, and here I am. There were ninety and nine, but he left the bull to find one little lost lamb. He was looking for one little lost lamb, and he found it. One little lost lamb, and here I am. you young Christians I know the right times are hard now and rough we worry a lot but you know we got God on our side we just laid another brother yesterday in the grave that makes three in two months but you know I don't worry because there's all three Christians and I'm going to see them again so you know this song is old, it's probably back with Methuselah. But you sing it with me and put your heart into it. Just don't call the words out, put your heart into it. Down here the burden's heavy and the road is rough and long. 
Sometimes my feet get weary and so sore, but there's a brighter day a coming, and I'll stay. couple of weeks who isn't being attacked yes, in, in everything in their life. He's even in this piano this yeah. morning. <laughs> He's in the play. <laughs> <laughs> we'll cast him out. <laughs> we need to get him out of this place, yes. out of our lives, yeah. out of this world. I want my Jesus to come back and yes, take me Christ. home. I can't stand this fighting. I Amen. want to go on to heaven. Amen. broken from the battle and I've lost another round Satan whispers to my troubled mind just lay your armor down where are those you've loved and trusted Look around you, they're all gone. It would be easy to surrender if you're standing all alone. Then I bow my head in sadness as I ponder what to do. I've been in God's army for so long. I've been a soldier true. Lord, 
what I've tried to be. Then I hear a voice from heaven saying, Pilgrim, it is I. Lift your head and take new courage and keep your eyes toward the sky. Then I see a great band of angels camped all around me. And I see the captain rising up a challenge to me. Well, I know I'm saved from all harm when I'm touching Jesus. Oh, yes, the battle is his. The victory is mine and the victory is sweet. Yes, I see a great band of angels kept all around me. And I see the captain rising up the challenge to me. Well, I know I'm saved from all harm when I'm touching Jesus. Oh, yes, the battle is his, but the victory is mine and the victory is sweet. Yes, the battle is his, the victory is mine and the victory about you all, but they just don't disappoint ever. Uh, I, I think about how many times that people have come up to us while we're out. They say, they say things like this. I just love to hear you sing. Or they say, you really helped me through a hard time. I remember when you sang at my daddy's funeral. I remember when I was at Revival and you sang, and I got saved that night. These are all things that we've heard, and, and those are the labors that these ladies have entered into, and I believe that Jesus is not going to forget about those things, not one bit. And this is not, uh, I'm not trying to puff up their heads or anything like that. I'm probably going to take a whipping for it, just so you all know, but the thing about it is they need to be encouraged. I think we all do. I think sometimes we forget and take for granted about the good works that people do inside of our lives. And we ought, ought not save those for, you know, there's going to come a day where if Jesus doesn't come back, that, that all of us are going to be down here and somebody's going to say he was a good man or she was a good woman. Why don't we say that right now? Why don't we give our flowers right now to the people that we love and care about? So girls, thank you all. Thank you for encouraging our church and thank you for making this place what it is. I appreciate it. Th Amen. Thank you. And I had one scripture and I'm going to turn Brother Denny loose. It, it's this. It's out of Philippians. It says that we can be confident of one thing. That he which began a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. So, girls, he's still performing a good work. I'm thankful that for each one of us who have accepted our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ as, as our personal, intimate Savior. That's what I talk to my girls about all the time. This, this relationship is between you and God. It's not between me and you and God. It's not between Papa, you and God. It's not between the preacher, you and God. It's between you and God. And so we can be confident of one thing and one thing only, that he who began a good work in you is going to be faithful to complete it. I'm so thankful for that fact that he's not going to leave you high and dry. This world, they'll leave you. 
They, your friends, they'll leave you. The people that you think are going to take care of you, they may leave you. But one thing I know for sure is that in the deepest, darkest places inside of your life, Jesus will not leave you. Praise God for that. Now, I don't, I, I don't know why I'm getting so worked up. I can't wait to hear Brother Danny preach. But I just wanted to give you that reminder that there's one thing and one thing that you can depend on in this life is that Jesus is not done with you yet. And He's continuing that good work that He started inside of you. With that being said, He's doing a good work in Brother Denny, and I cannot wait to hear my brother preach. So come on, brother. You know, there's a, there's a note up here, and I don't know if it was this Sunday or last Sunday, but it said, Brother R.E. Wright was baptized 23 years ago today. Praise the Lord for that. That's a good reminder. Okay, if this is up, can you hear me good? Okay. First of all, the the brother that was here a while ago that got called to preach. I know, I know what you're going through because I ran from it for years. Uh, I, think he's, I think he stepped out. But, okay. But uh, the, when, you, when you get that, when the Lord calls you, the devil's going to try to attack you more than ever. Is it kind of echoing? Okay, but uh, you know, he called his. He said he's got the call to preach. The Lord had called him, and uh, you know uh, that's when the devil's going to attack him more than ever. And you know, after twenty some years, I still don't feel worthy, and I still don't feel like that uh, I deserve to do this. But he took a willing vessel, and he's using me every day. Today. My message is called peace. And I had something totally else planned till six o'clock yesterday. And the Lord put something on my heart. And it was wild. I came in this morning and her bulletin says peace. So thank the Lord for that. You know, before we get started, let's uh, go to the Lord in prayer. Father God, I just thank you for this day. I thank you for these blessings. I just thank you for the opportunity to stand in the pulpit today and deliver your word. I pray today that I don't say anything to lead, any, lead anyone astray or say anything to hurt anyone, Father. I just pray for you to lead, guide, and direct this service. In your name I pray. Amen. Peace. You know, every time we turn our TV on, what do we see? We see uh, we're living in a world of turmoil and trouble. You know, most of what in the news today is bad news. And I think that's another story for another time. I think that's all political. But that's, we'll get to that later. But you know, our lives are defined by a lack of peace and a turmoil in this world. But peace movements have been going on for a long time. You know, people are always saying they're uh, doing uh, uh, demonstrations. Uh, you know, I'm using for the right word here. Uh, pickets or whatever, you know. You know, and it seems to me that any person that who is, uh, has a quest for peace and sought for peace, is it truly peace that they're wanting or are they looking in the right place? You know, so many people are saying they want to do this and they want to do that, but are they seeking the will of God? God's peace is different than the peace of the world. He will give us a peace like no other. No matter what we're going through in our lives, you know, sickness, financial problems, marital problems, we still have a peace about us. So many times we let the problems and circumstances of the world define who we are. We've all get caught up in it. It's a daily struggle. Someone said early, a daily struggle with the flesh and the spirit. 
100%. That's why we have to stay prayed up in the Word. We have to spend time alone with Him. We need to read the Bible daily. And it's hard as parents, grandparents, we got kids, grandkids playing sports. But for the guy that died on the cross for all of us, how much is it to give an hour a day to read, pray? You know, I pray several times throughout the day. Some prayers are long and, you know, some prayers are, I hate to say, pick me up prayers, but God knows her heart. He doesn't know what our desires are. He knows what we want. He just wants to hear us ask for them. And so many times we worry about in situations in our life about what other people think. Let that go. Let that go. You know, this is not on my... I give them a list of my scripture and... uh, this is not on there, but uh, <laughs> the Lord's putting something else on me. Uh, you know, John three sixteen. I think if you want to put that up there, John three sixteen, it's the most probably the most popular scripture ever. And I apologize for putting you on the spot there. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whoever believeth in Him shall not perish but have everlasting life. Then the next verse. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world might be saved through him. Christ didn't die on the cross to condemn us. He died on the cross to save us. And that's why we have to let go of things of this world and let him have control of our lives. It's easy to get consumed and bogged down with the troubles of today, but we need to let Christ lead us. We have to be a willing vessel. We have to think we're t- quit thinking we're so holy that we don't have problems, because we do. We've all got problems. Uh, yesterday, me and my wife went to Walmart, and I thought, Denny, keep this under control. You're doing a service tomorrow when you're out and about. You know, <laughs> just be honest. We're under attack daily, not daily. Early, every minute. And that's why we need the peace of Christ. And as I said, you know, Jesus clearly distinguished the kind of peace that he is giving is different from the peace of the world. I'll move on here. I've got a little sidetrack. Let's go to Ezekiel 13.10. Because even because they have seduced my people, saying peace, and there was no peace, and one built up a wall, and lo, others daubed it. When we speak of peace, we need to have a clear understanding of what true peace really is. If we do not understand the true definition of peace, then we can be misled. It's easy to be misled, ain't it? Sometimes the very people we trust can mislead us. Sometimes it's on purpose, maybe. And maybe sometimes they've been misled. And that's why I'm a firm believer. Read the Bible for yourself. We're all humans. We make mistakes. This Word doesn't make mistakes. This is a guidebook. This is the greatest love story ever told. This is the how-to manual for every part of our lives. We just have to be willing to read it and follow it. And do we sometimes don't do that? Yeah. Now, you'll, you'll find out as I do messages, I don't care one bit to use myself as an example because I'm far from perfect. Far. One of the definitions the world uses for peace is that peace is the absence of conflict. See? We see countries at war. We see people at war. We see families at war. And we think of, you know, it's all about conflict. And it's not. It's an inner struggle with ourselves. Sometimes we just have to let go and let God. 
and quit trying to do things yourself. And when you give it to him and you bring it to this altar and you give it to him, let it stay here. After 20-some years, I'm still bad about two days. He did not answer it. I'll just pick it up and take it back. When all I had to do was trust from the beginning. How many times in our lives have we seen where God was in control and we didn't even know it? He had a plan when we didn't know there was a plan. Then we take a road map and we do a detour. When if we'd listened to Christ, we'd have went straight there. It's a daily, it's a daily struggle. It's an hourly struggle, minute struggle. That's why we have to be committed to Him in our walk. You know, so many times in our lives, we just get beat down and get tired and we just give up. A Christ that would send His Son to die. A God that would send his son to die on the cross for all of us, I think he deserves our best effort. And we need, as I said earlier, work on those areas of our life. You know, our circumstances change. Our relationships with people can change. If our peace is in relationships and our peace is in the uh, changes of the world, then we don't have true peace. We need to let God give us that peace. And when he gives us that peace, the way we look at people, the way we uh, talk to people, we look through his eyes, not ours. When we look through our eyes, we see faults, failures. When we look through his eyes, we see love. We're supposed to give people love. And like, like I said, I don't want to hurt nobody. I don't want to say that. We are to love everybody. We don't agree about everything. But we Lord help me here. Uh, people are so offended now, easily. This right here. That's the way of life. If it doesn't correspond with this, then it's wrong. I don't care where you go, who you are. So let's quit worrying about, I don't want to say hurting people. We don't want to hurt people. We love people and we accept people and we pray for people and they will change and they will grow. But we have to stand on God's word. And I believe that's what's wrong with this country. You know, I've seen a study somewhere where it says 90% of the, this country is Christians. Well, I'm going to tell you something. Either that's wrong or we're the sorriest group of Christians that ever lived. Because I'm going to tell you something. If 90% of people are Christians and we're living like we're supposed to and we're praying for people like we're supposed to, this world wouldn't be in the shape it's in. You know. Help me, Lord. I, there's, I just don't want to say something. That, I mean, oh, help me, Lord. You know. Uh, just the peace of God, the love of God, let it control your life. Let it consume your life. And give it to others and help them. You know, so many people are lost and they don't have that peace of the Lord. And that's why if you're here today, if you're here today and you're not saved, you're the most important person in here. Because all you got to do is I felt for years I wasn't good enough, I wasn't worthy, I've been this, I've done that. Lay it down here. Leave it. Give it to him. Let him lead your lives. He'll give you peace like you've never known. Even in sickness, in death, whatever's going on around you, he'll give you that peace. And if you're here and you are a Christian and you don't feel that peace in your life, there's something that's gotten in your way. And we all have those days. Bring it here and give it right here to him. And let him. You know, we're supposed to be full of joy and love. You know, 
Ain't it bad when you get together with a group of Christians and you look around and it looks like everybody's getting baptized in lemon juice or something, you know? <laughs> Let's look for that peace. Let's strive for that peace. You know, so many times we let our circumstances in our lives define who we are. Let's don't do that. Psalm 4 8. I will both lay, down, lay me down in peace and sleep, for thou, Lord, only makest me dwell in safety. Let's go straight to Psalm 29 11. The Lord will give strength unto his people. The Lord will bless his people with peace. See, sometimes when we hear of blessings, it's not financial. So many times we get caught up not in every facet of the world that blessings, you have to have the biggest house, you have to have the best car. Hey, if you got a job that feeds your family, if you got a car that gets you back and forth to work, you got a roof over your head that you don't get wet when it rains, thank God. Yeah. It's a blessing, you know. And sometimes I think we look at what others have and we get envious. We get jealousy. Be at peace with yourself, with what you have, what the Lord has blessed you with. You know, a peace that I have is my spouse, my kids, not just Andrew and Rebecca and Josh, but Parker and Lauren are my kids also. All saved. Hey, that's a peace... That's a peace like no other. You know, if something happens to any of us, they're in a better place. Now, do we want that to happen at this moment? No. <laughs> but we know eternal life, we'll see each other again. But it's just a peace knowing that we're going to spend eternity together. David understood that it is the Lord who gives him strength. He recognized his inability and God's ability. That's what I like there. He recognized, and I'm putting myself in this, I recognized my inability and I recognized God's ability. You know. David knew something that the people all around him didn't know. He knew that God could and would take care of him. I'm not sure when he learned this. Was it when he fought the bear? Maybe he learned it when he fought the lion while tending his father's sheep. Maybe he learned it when he went to hand to hand with Goliath. Maybe he learned it as he was pursued all over the country by Saul. Neither less, he realized it. The peace is also described as peace with God through Christ. That's in Romans 5.1. You know, we as a church need to be praying for other churches. We all can be in one accord. And that... I've never, been, I've never been called up in that name over the door. Brothers and sisters in different denominations throughout our land, uh, as long as they are a Bible-believing church, a Bible-preaching church, and a praying church. And that's why I pray that each and every one of us can surrender whatever's in our lives is not going smoothly to the Lord and look for that peace. A peace like no other. When you get that peace, you'll know it. I mean, you've had a hard week at work, but it's 5 o'clock on Friday, and you're getting off work, and you're thinking, well, and you're looking forward to church, you're looking forward to seeing everybody. Just a peace like that. I mean, just feels so good. Feel like you're going to swell up till your heart's going to bust. That's peace. Don't let the world tell you what the peace is, because the world is out there for their views. So many times, so many times, so many people have just, like I said earlier, have gotten hurting by, let's just be honest, people have got hurting in the church. They've got hurting by family. They got hurting by friends. And they, and they just give up. So I'm going to challenge everybody here. And I'm number one out here. Put Christ first in everything you do, every part of your life. Seek his direction. 
Let him lead your life. Let him guide your life. And he will. He's just looking for willing vessels. I promised you. I never thought that he'd ever call me to do this. <laughs> you know. But, Lord, here I am. And I just thank you for the opportunity. And uh, that peace that Christ gives us cannot be taken away. Ain't you glad that, you know, if we're really going to have peace, we have to have a relationship, like I said earlier, with prayer time, Bible time, fellowship. Now, a lot of people believe, well, I can stay home on Sunday and watch the preacher on TV. And if you're sick and afflicted, and that's what you can do, but willing-bodied Christians need to be together for fellowship. Because we lift each other up. When one of us is struggling, you know, there's nothing like a good prayer warrior. So we just have to uh, do the things of the world uh, of Christ so that we don't do the things of the world. I should have said sorry about that. You know, remember, Jesus said, peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give you. Let not your heart be troubled, nor let it be fearful. Quit being afraid. You know, anxiety, stress, everyday emotions, ain't it? Stress of this old world will beat you down. You know, when you see loved ones, friends. You know, I've lost, I've lost some really good friends in the last several months. Good Christian men. We're not to question, we're not to judge. God's in control. And he'll reveal in time when, it, when the timing's right for us to understand. I believe that with all my heart. So, like I said, my challenge today is this. Is if you don't have that peace, do what you need to do today to get that peace. And the first thing to do is if you're not saved, just accept Christ. And like I said, you're the most important person here. This altar is open for you. And if, like I said, if you're here and maybe you're not burning on fire like you once did, hey, when you come up here if, and you're a Christian, it's none of our business. It's between you and the Lord. Our job is to be praying for you. Because when I come up here, when I've got something going on, I want you to be praying for me and not question what I did or what happened. We can't pick or choose how we're going to serve him. We have to do it all in accordance with his word. I'm going to close here. What some in the world claim as peace is not true peace. My throat's going out and I apologize. It is merely the absence of outward conflict. But what this view of peace fails to recognize is that the inner conflict is dealt with. There will be no, until the inner conflict, thank you brother, until the inner conflict is dealt with, there will be no uh, real peace. It's all in here. If we don't have true peace, it's all in here because we've not surrendered, we've not accepted, and we're not letting him lead our lives. And if we're bogged down, it's because we've, I don't want to say lost the peace, but we maybe took a step back and we're not doing like we're supposed to. You know, remember the Lord will give you strength in your times and troubles. Just help us all today, Lord. Give us all strength. Just lead God and direct us all. Hey, I want him to lead every part of my life. From if I go down somewhere to buy something and I can't afford it, block it. If I'm not being the best grandparent I can be, tell me how I can be. If I'm not the best spouse I can be, let me know how to be. Give me that peace. Give me that understanding. Lead me. 
I keep saying it a lot, and that's the way I live by this. Lead me, guide me, direct me. I need direction. I'm basically, that's basically about the close for me.